Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Today is June the 21st of 2019. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord Jesus Christ. For to Him the honor and the glory belong are His, only His. His salvation is one of a kind. His love is indescribable. All right. He loves us in such an awesome way that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He died for you, my brother. He died for you, my sister. All right? So anytime we feel down and we feel like, why does nobody understand? Why can't people just see the truth for what it really is? Remember, Jesus did. Did and he does know. He knows, my friends. Jesus, the real God, knows everything that has been done to you. And everything that he, will or he has already done for you. All right? This is why you're so strong. This is the reason why, my friends, you have come to know Jesus for who he really is. All right? That's my buddy. Hallelujah. Buddy! So, I do have a word in the book of Revelation, chapter 22. The book of Revelation, chapter 22. We're going to keep this short, simple, and straight to the point. I'm going to try today. And it's going to start from verse 7. I'm going to read the word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, may the blood of Christ be upon this word, upon me, my mind, my soul, and everything, Jesus. Hallelujah. May it be received by those listening, Father, for you to minister to them, to let them know the time, Lord Jesus Christ, that we are living in today, so we can be right with you. For the honor and the glory of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the prophecy written in the scroll. I, John, am the one who saw and heard all these things. And when I saw and heard these things, I fell down to worship the angel who showed them to me. But again, he said, no, don't worship me. I am a servant of God just like you. Hallelujah. The angel is telling John he's a servant of God just like John is. All right. And he didn't want John to be bowing down to him and worshiping him. Hallelujah. But again, he said, no, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers, the prophets, as well as all who obey what is written in this scroll. Worship God. John thought the angel was God, but the angel was like, no, 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 I'm not God. All right, don't worship me. Hallelujah. Then he instructed me, do not seal up the prophetic words you have written, for the time is near. Let the one who is doing wrong continue to do wrong. The one who is vile continue to be vile. The one who is good continue to do good. And the one who is holy continue in holiness. See, and these are the Lord's word. See, I am coming soon and my reward is with me to repay all according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who wash their robes so they can enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and, their, and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star jesus just said i am the bright morning star the bright morning star hallelujah to me that makes me understand like the sun and that's why the people say the son of man is coming through the clouds the son of man he is the bright morning star there's a reference to that and it may not be literal it may be literal but with god you know we may not know everything, but through revelation, through the more we seek him, he'll try to explain the meaning of his word. All right. Jesus says, look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the prophecy written in this scroll, my friend. And I want you to know 
It's not about being perfect in the eyes of the people around you because believe me, the people around you will find imperfection. They will even make stuff up about you. So you won't seem holy or you won't be good enough for Jesus. But you are good enough for Jesus. The moment you said, Jesus, I am a sinner. I need, I repent from all my sin. I repent from any sin known and unknown. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, God. Hallelujah. God has forgiven you. And anybody who is trying to accuse you day and night, my friends, hallelujah, you must focus on Jesus. Focus on the one who saves and pulls you out of darkness. He already saved you. And you're doing everything you need to do when you seek Jesus. When you understand that his love is a compassion in his heart. When he looked at you and you were messing up and you were doing things that were hurting other people or people were betraying you and you were carrying this burden of betrayal, this burden of hurt, this burden of pain, this burden of deception. It was Jesus who cared for you. It was God who says, come to me. Jesus was calling you because he knew you couldn't do it by yourself anymore. He knew there was nobody around you that can carry that burden for you except him. And the more you seek him, the lighter that burden comes because Jesus is like, that's non-existent. Anyone who's pulling up sin from your past, he's like, that's not from him. Jesus says anything, any lies, any deception, any evil in your life that you have repented from, you have given to the Lord, to him it is non-existent. To him it does not exist. And that's why he wants you to believe that. Because the enemy, your adversity, Satan, the de devil, will work day and night to bring up your past, to bring up lies. And when he can't bring up your past, he will lie, my friends. He will make people lie on you. He will bring lies and try to make you believe the lies of other people. This is how Satan works. People keep on thinking that Satan can only work by your past sin. That's not true. We must know at least a little bit about our our the one who is against us. The one who is against us does not need you to sin. The one against us needs you to believe his lies. He will tell you you are doing wrong when you're not doing anything wrong. He will tell you you're a screw up and you're a mess up when you have not screwed up or messed up. All right. As long as you focus on what he's doing, then he feels that he has a stronghold on you. All right, but it is up to us to remind each other as believers, you must step on the head of Satan. It is by the blood of Christ that we stand here. It is not by our righteous works. It is by the love of Christ that we do good things, that we start to grow. All right, nobody here can test your integrity. If I had all the money to feed all the homeless people around this whole world, I would do that. But I don't, my friends. Only who the Lord leads me to to help and what I can give, whether it's money or whether it's the word of life. That's what I do, my friends. All right. I can't please everybody, nor can you. And that's why you have to believe that Jesus Christ has forgiven you. Jesus Christ wants to release you from what the words of people who do not believe in you. All right. If they don't believe in Jesus, why would they believe in you? If they don't believe in Jesus, why would they believe in me? My friends, Jesus is a redeemer. Jesus came to heal the sick. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus came to restore us, to put us back together so that he can, we can be filled with his love, his compassion, his strength, his clarity. We are no longer living and trying to figure out what is right. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth and Jesus is the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by him. I leave you with these words, my brothers and sisters, so you understand how we actually get to this point, my friends, of redemption, my friends. Because you, we will never be perfect in the, eyes of, in the eyes of man. Man will always say, dirty thought, you did this. Of course, I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right, because if I was perfect, I wouldn't need Jesus. But since I am an imperfect woman, striving to know the truth, striving to follow my king, I need him every single day of my life. And you shut down the enemy and his lies. Every single time you tell, you declare your need for Jesus. Because without Jesus, he would be right. 
we would not be able to enter the kingdom of God. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, starting from chapter 12, book of Revelation, verse, hallelujah, 10 and 11. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has happened at last, the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser has been thrown down to earth, the one who accused our brothers and sisters before our God day and night. Even as you're sleeping, the accuser is accusing you. Satan is looking for your flaws. Satan is accusing you to God. But this is the beautiful part of our Jesus, of our Savior. This is why he's a Savior. It says, the accuser has been thrown down to earth, the one who accused our brothers and sisters before our God day and night. And they have defeated him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of their testimony. Because they pleaded, because they believed that the shed blood of Christ on Calvary has redeemed them of sin has liberated them from strongholds, from chains, from bondage, my friends. And they're declaring the testimony of Jesus Christ. They're declaring their salvation. They're declaring their healing. They're declaring their, their death and their resurrection, their death of their fleshy desires and their resurrections. You may have weaknesses, my friends. God knows we all have weaknesses, but every day that goes by, you get stronger, you get stronger, and you get stronger. God makes you realize that you were made for these times. You were made for today. God will give you the strength. God will give you the reinforcement. God will bring you people to remind you how strong you really are, how beautiful and amazing you are, how holy you are, not by might, not by power, not by good deeds, but by the blood of the Lamb. Your testimony will always be the blood of Jesus. So anytime people say that you're not good enough, tell them, and God, if I'm good enough for God, then I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay with God, my friends. Hallelujah. Some weird little animal just flew by me. It says here, And they have defeated him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of their testimony, and they were not afraid to die. They were not afraid to die because Jesus made them to understand life after death and that they have a promise of eternal salvation, that there is a beautiful place without tears, without suffering, my friends, that is going to be for us. It's going to be for you. It's going to be for me and for all who have come into salvation. We are not going to be stuck in this suffering, in this present persecution. But we are getting to know Jesus. We have an assignment to our life to declare salvation. Push on, press on, my sister. I love you very much. May God bless you. May God be with you always. And remember, let's praise to the Lord. Let's shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.